Hi, I'm Lauren and this is my helper Bianca and we're here to talk about pucking Angora rabbits. We are in Salt Lake City, Utah and we have one English Angora buck, though in the past we have had French and Satin bucks and does. Um, French, Satin, and English Angora are all pluckable breeds of Angora rabbits as opposed to um, German Angoras which have to be shorn. So we're going to talk about how you pluck and why. We're going to show you how we pluck and then I will show you some products that come from the plucked wool. Okay, so you pluck a rabbit's wool in preparation for the new undercoat coming in. It's not yanking the wool out of the rabbit's skin. Um, it has already been released from the skin just like when a dog sheds. For example, my Border Collie mix turns my whole house black when she blows her coat twice a year. And it's the same mechanism with the rabbits. It sheds it and it's still on the rabbit because the wool is very staticky so it's stuck to the previous coat but it is just loose and we can just pull it off. If you pull um, the wool off properly it should not hurt the rabbit. There should be no indication from the rabbit that it hurts. If you pull on the wool and it seems to hurt the rabbit or the rabbit's squirming or fighting you or the skin is coming up with the wool then that rabbit probably isn't ready to be plucked yet. Um, you'll know if you're hurting the rabbit and you'll probably be able to tell if the rabbit is just happy and content to be plucked too. Plucking a rabbit bald isn't necessarily an indication that it is too soon to pluck the rabbit. Both of the bucks that I've had have plucked bald on the hind legs whereas everywhere else they had a new coat coming in already. So they're just growing hair in a patchy pattern and even though they're ready to be plucked and they have an undercoat coming in on their back, on their belly, on their front legs, their hind legs for some reason just grow their wool a little bit later. But it, they didn't give me indication that it hurt them so they were ready they were ready to be plucked there too. So how will you know if your rabbit is ready to be plucked? Your rabbit is ready to be plucked when you're seeing loose wool around the cage, hutch, enclosure, whatever it is. Um, also, if they're starting to mat more than they were before, more than normal. Um, if you're brushing the rabbit and you have loose wool coming out on the brush, a lot of it, that is. And if they're getting a lot of vegetative matter in their coat, like the hay that you're giving them. Another unfortunate sign that it's time to pluck is when there are woolly bunny poops because that means that the rabbit, when it's grooming itself, is ingesting that loose wool and that can actually be very dangerous and kill your rabbit. So that's why plucking is very important and it's important to pluck on time. I generally pluck my rabbits about every three months, but it can be more or less often depending on the individual rabbits. So there are a couple different reasons why a person might choose to pluck their rabbits. It could be routine maintenance to keep their coats mat free, clean, to keep them cool in hot weather, to keep them from ingesting the wool and getting wool block, etc. It could also be um, just an aesthetic reason that they like certain parts of the coat to be shorter and other parts to be longer. You'll see rabbits that are like Instagram stars. For those folks that do have the internet sensation rabbits that have a very particular grooming um, aesthetic, sometimes using clippers can be choppy looking and so it's not necessarily preferred. And then another reason that somebody might pluck their rabbit, which is why I raise rabbits, is for the fiber arts. So I pluck my rabbits in order to get wool for spinning yarn, I dye yarn, um, it can also be used for felting, that's not something that I do, but Angora yarn is very soft, very sought after. It's, it takes dye just fine and it's, it's really a wonderful um, fiber to work with. So we'll get to the plucking and then after the plucking I will show you some finished products with Angora wool. All right, so now it's time to get to the plucking. There are a couple of supplies that you're gonna wanna have. I like to use a slicker brush. This is meant for dogs or you know rabbits. I got it at Target in the pet section for just a few dollars. Um, I often like to have a dryer sheet with me because this wool can be very staticky and if you rub your hands on the dryer sheet it can um, reduce the sticking. You'll need a rabbit. Uh, we also need a container for the wool. I tend to use formula containers. They are about the right size for a coat. Sometimes I'm squishing it in there a little bit, but it's a nice big container that's reusable opens and closes. I, I always use plastic items more than once. So, And if your rabbit is matted, you might end up needing scissors. This is also a great time to cut the rabbit's nails, so you might choose to have those items with you as well. So this is Graham. 
He's my English Angora buck. He's pretty young. This is his baby coat, which is going to be shorter and thinner than an adult coat, but it's very soft. So I um, am, am plucking his coat for two reasons. One, I'm going to spin it or sell it, and because it is 100 degrees here just about every day, and while I put ice in his in Graham's cage with him, he lives outside, and I don't want him to be too hot, so I'm prioritizing plucking. His wool is pretty crimpy here because he's been laying next to an ice cube and it's got condensation on it. So one thing that I do before I pluck is I like to give him a little comb just to get all of that wool nice and combed out. It'll help get out some of the vegetative matter as well and some of the little teeny like bits of mats and webbing um, so that it's not in the wool that you are saving. So it's going to come off in the brush. I'm going to pull some of the little pieces of matted stuff off and I'm just going to give them a little brush before I start. I don't know if you can see in this lighting, but Graham's undercoat is coming in and it's a darker caramel color and then his coat that's blown is this really nice light color. So that's the part that is going to come out and then the darker color is what's going to stay on him. Graham is a tort, English Angora. So you might notice by looking at his back that I've already done a lot of plucking. Um, I wanted to really get going on this before. So I'm making the video kind of as an afterthought with all of this that's still left because I hadn't finished. So let's find a spot on Graham that's prime for the plucking. And that's his hind parts here. So we'll give it a little brush. There's some hay in there. There's some webbing, which is kind of pre-matted fiber where it looks like it's starting to mat, but it'll come apart when you comb it. So, gave him a little brush. I know where the undercoat is because I can see it, and so I have a pretty good indication for where the coat is that's ready to be harvested because it's that lighter color. There's a very clear distinction there. And to harvest the wool, you're just going to grasp the ends that are far from the body. You'll see I'm several inches from his skin here. And you can hold the skin down if you'd like, or you just grasp with a couple fingers. I like to do a grasp like this, and then you just pull. And that wool just comes right out, and then I drop it into my formula container. So I'll just go ahead and do that to show you guys how it just comes out nice and easily. It really shouldn't be a struggle. And with each grip, I'm getting a little bit of fiber here. So Graham here isn't struggling at all. He doesn't seem to be upset or in pain. He's sitting contentedly on my lap. There's a <laughs> gotta get his footing though, of course. He's gotta get comfortable. And um, another important fact is that his skin is staying taut against his body. When I pull in the wool, the skin doesn't go anywhere. So it's just ready to come out. We're keeping him cool, we're keeping him safe from that wool block, and we're harvesting lots of beautiful fiber for spinning. So that is how I pluck an angora rabbit. Now, a couple notes on the facial ornaments, the ears, the head. Um, with the English angoras, they have this lovely facial wool. I often will just brush that out, pull out anything that's loose, but they don't seem to like that very much. Um, the stuff that's on the top of the head and on the ears is shorter than I would want to use for spinning. So I tend to just kind of comb it out, leave it alone, um, throw it away when I do have it, but he looks cute. He looks like a nice English gentleman, so I leave it there. And then to get the belly, there's two ways that I do it. Graham is pretty tame. He's been handled a lot. So one way to do it is to put your hands at the base of their head and neck, holding the ears down against the body, and then just flipping this little buddy right like this. So he's being very gentle, safe, content and I can just pull this belly wool just like I did with all the rest of it. You can see that. I did a lot of the belly already so there's not that much loose fiber down here. But you can just pull it up. This belly wool is actually nice and long and clean so I am going to save that. He is a tort so it's a lot lighter in color than the back but that's fine for me. Sometimes you might find that the belly wool is kind of short or dirty and you don't want to save it. The other way that I might pluck um, the, the belly of an angora if they are more squirmy than Graham is, is, whoops, here we go. Sometimes I just sit them down as if they're sitting on my lap and I would hold 
him with one arm and I would pluck with the other arm. So like that. Luckily I don't really have to do that with Graham because he's a pretty he's a pretty content guy. I think he actually likes to be flipped more than he likes to be held like that. Alright, so now that we've seen Graham and how I plucked Graham, I'm gonna show you some fiber products that I've made with his wool and then some of my other Angoras. So First off, you end up with the loose fiber that I will pack up into quantities. This is a 50 gram bag, which is a large portion of an adult coat. Then these are quarter ounce bags of Graham's baby coat here. And so some spinners might want a large quantity like this. Many spinners just want a little bit of Angora fiber to add softness to the wool fiber that they're spinning. Angora is also a very hot fiber. It's seven times warmer than wool, so very few people are spinning pure angora because it would be so so warm but that, sometimes that's a good thing so I have these bags of raw fiber packed up this is from a chocolate chinchilla colored satin and these are Graham's baby coat like I said before another thing that you can do with the angora of course is blending it and this is a lovely bat that I made on a drum carter it's 75% alpaca wool and 25% angora it's very very soft it wouldn't be too hot because it's only 25% Angora, but it is very, very, very decadent because of that large amount of Angora in it. And then I made up a bunch of these bats and I spun them into yarn. So this is a skein of yarn made from that basic exact bat and applied it with some gold string in there. You can see a little bit of sparkle in there. So this is a really soft yarn, 75% alpaca, 25% Angora. It's got the bloom from the Angora. It's so soft, it's not too hot, and it's got that nice sparkle. So those are some products that I have made. I can't wait to, to knit a little cowl or something out of that for myself. It's gonna be so nice. I hope that this video is helpful and informational, and have a great day.